Hello, welcome to a Cybex webinar number four. Um, today we are talking about the capture the flag module. Um, like I said, this is a number four in the series of webinars where we talk where we talk about cyber ranges and and um, things that you can do with it. My name is Atran Dahab. I am your co-host today, together with uh, a colleague, Denis Seraplatov. Um, I am the Vice President of Direct Sales, and you have likely heard me talking in our previous webinars as well. Uh, Dennis, great to have you here the second time now. Um, uh, welcome. Um, and before I let you talk, let's um, go a little bit about the overview of uh, different um, modules offered by Cybexer in our cyber range technology. Um, so first of all, we can enable our clients to do exercises and events, live fire, threat hunting, and capture the flag, the topic of today. We also have these modules to enable individual skills testing and e-learning uh, for the non-event type of exercises. Um, <clears throat> and then lastly, um, technology testing and research through, for example, digital twins is getting highly popular. Um, not going to bore you with the details of this slide today. Um, instead, I will give it over to you, Dennis, now and, and let you talk about the Capture the Flag module. Welcome from my side as well. Dennis is my name, and uh, I would introduce the CTF use case as implemented on Cyberster's CyberRange platform. So the, the in a CTF exercise, the participants are faced with several Jeopardy style tasks that need to be solved by employing various cybersecurity skills to find clearly defined answers. And um, as the name suggests, actually, the expected uh, answer can be nothing more than a simple flag that has no meaning of its own, but it is just a proof that the participant was able to successfully solve the task and uh, find uh, the answer and by that reaching the desired goal. And uh, in this exercise for tasks, participants are typically presented with a number of hints as well to help them progress through the exercise. But now without further ado, let us actually have a look how that use case is implemented in the cyber range platform. And I would start looking at this case from the exercise or maybe even a competition organizer view. And this is exactly what you see now on the screen. This is our main graphical interface towards the cyber range platform. And this view we call a podium view, uh, which presents you the three leading teams and uh, the progress they have through the exercises, the total number of scoring, and so forth. Uh, as this type of um, exercises could be run as competitions that are live broadcasted as well, so that could be one of the views that is also live uh, broadcasted because it's uh, visually quite uh, uh, observable. And then there are different uh, other ways uh, for the exercise uh, organizer or competition organizer to see the progress of the teams, of the exercises, of the tasks within the exercises. Uh, it is possible to have uh, an, a visibility of all participating teams and see their progress. Uh, typically, the tasks are split in a number of categories here, you see, and uh, Obviously, with the different colors, we visualize what is the status of that task as seen from a certain team perspective. You can see which task has been solved, uh, how many points were received for that task, and what is the time spent for uh, solving the task, and if there were any hints used. As I mentioned previously, uh, the tasks would typically uh, include a number of hints for the participants to progress through the exercise. You can also see if there were any issues uh, for any of the teams there, like uh, this example that uh, you can see the task was not solved and uh, there was actually quite significant time uh, spent for that task. So maybe you would uh, like to see if the team maybe have some technical challenges there. 
and so forth. Uh, there are various ways of how to visualize the progress uh, of, the, of the exercise and status of different teams per exercise, per task, uh, and so forth. All that is meant to provide the highest level of detail for the exercise organizer that they would have the full visibility of what is going on in the exercise. And all the views are live updated. At the moment, this you see just a static uh, status view because that's a pre-run exercise. But of course, uh, all the all the numbers and scores and uh, all the status statuses here uh, are updated live. Now, as we have looked uh, at the exercise organizer perspective, let us have a look at the, how this use case looks from the participant perspective. Let me log in into the environment uh, as an exercise participant now. This is a demo environment. We have a number of modules here. And uh, what we're interested in this specific webinar is the CTF use case. Now I would be logging in into the environment as a participant. I'm presented a number of challenges here. And as you see, the challenges would typically belong to different categories. As an example here, we have the tasks from and challenges from steganography, area web exploitation, reverse engineering, and uh, so forth. So when the exercise starts, I'm given uh, a certain time limit for uh, the competition. In this case, you can see that uh, I'm given a bit over six hours to solve the challenges. And let me show a simple example of how a typical task would uh, look like and, and what is the process of solving the task and how do I interact with the actual uh, virtual machines running on the cyber range. So this is a simple task from a steganography area. So each task would have a, a description and then a certain question that I would need to submit the answer to. And as I mentioned, uh, the tasks would typically also have a certain hints. So uh, I would need to solve the task by interacting with certain hosts and machines in the cyber range, as I mentioned. Uh, in the demo environment, we have enabled uh, a web console towards the, the, the hosts in the cyber range, but depending on the setup, it's perfectly possible to also provide a VPN access to the cyber range. So instead of using a web console, the users would be able to use native tools uh, in their computers. So both options are perfectly possible. But let me show uh, the typical flow of uh, solving such, an, uh, such a challenge. So let me go to the website that I'm given in the exercise. I can see there is a binary text that I would probably need to convert to text. Um, I can use some hints if needed, the hints would slowly get me into actually solving uh, the task. So finally, it gives me the hint that I would actually need to convert this binary string into text. So once I have done that, either using manual conversion, which probably will not be the case, but I would probably use some type of uh, converter for that. So if I'm ready with the answer, I think I found uh, the flag, then I would submit it as a stream. In this case, um, I failed. But if I would um, do the task correctly, then I would be given the green light, and then I would be assigned uh, the points for this exercise. Uh, I would like to mention once again that since I used two hints, each hint would cost me some points, some negative points. So instead of getting 100, uh, maximum 100 points for this exercise, I would be given only 50 because I have used two hints if I'm able to solve the exercise, of course. And then um, I would proceed the same way with uh, the other tasks and challenges there. So that uh, was a brief, but uh, I hope it gave you the perspective of both exercise organizer and the participant view. Can I ask you to scroll down once more and show what other categories there were um, as 
I think it was like a quick, so crypto and network. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, if that is it, um, this was uh, a short webinar. Um, obviously, we just got the surface here, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we welcome any questions and, and comments from the listeners, uh, watchers, and um, stay tuned for more webinars to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.